Welcome to our continuing study in the book of Acts. Today we're in Acts chapter 19. Now, uh, Paul began his th third missionary journey after he reported back to Jerusalem and went to his home stomping ground, as it were, in Antioch. And then he begins the third missionary journey, going overland through Asia Minor, hundreds of kilometers, until he gets to Ephesus. Again, he told him he was coming back, and he'd come back now if it was God's will. Um, Apollos, we told, has gone on to Corinth. And so Paul gets to uh, Ephesus to build up the church. And um, we have an incident that occurred with a group of 12 disciples. Um, and I'm going to just deal with seven verses this morning uh, on a theological basis, because sometimes this verse has been... I believe, misused to propound a particular uh, theological position, which I don't think is very biblical. When Apollos was at Corinth, Paul took the road through the interior and arrived at Ephesus. There he found some disciples and asked them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? They answered, no, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. So Paul asked, then what baptism did you receive? John's baptism, they replied. Paul said John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. He told the people to believe in the one coming after him, that is Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized into the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. There were about 12 men in all. Who were these men? Were they believers? Had they come through to faith in Christ? The answer is no. A disciple is a generic term, a follower. Um, they had heard about John's baptism. John came preaching a baptism of repentance some 20 to 30 years before. So there were still people around the empire who had embraced what John had taught. And John had taught that we need to turn from sin and we need to follow the laws of God and be prepared for the coming Messiah. And people got baptized uh, largely through Judea in Israel, but obviously their message had gone far beyond the borders of Israel. But these disciples that we encounter in Ephesus hadn't even heard of the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm going to state again, the Bible teaches clearly that coming through to salvation is a work of the Holy Spirit. John Three, where Jesus teaches, unless a man is born again by the Spirit, he cannot be a believer. I affirm again with Paul's teaching from Romans chapter 8, verse 9, which says these words, If anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. So this passage is dealing with people who haven't come through to a real faith. They're believing on turning from sin and repentance and trusting God for his coming Messiah, but they haven't received the coming Messiah. That's why Paul had to speak to them about Jesus. And he would then have to go step by step on their, the need to understand Jesus' death for sin, our sin, his death on the cross, his resurrection, and his uh, ascension into glory at the right hand of God the Father. Thereafter, he would return to gather his church. And so Paul had explained that to them. And um, once they understand that, that actually when you come through to faith in Christ, you receive the Holy Spirit, they were then baptized into Christ. Up to now, they'd only been baptized into John. Now they have the complete message. Now they are complete believers, as it was with the disciples in the New Testament. When did the disciples come through to real faith? Well, only finally at Pentecost when the Holy Spirit is given. They had the knowledge, they had the desire, but the Spirit of God came upon them at Pentecost. At Pentecost, he came upon them and they spoke in tongues. Uh, when Cornelius, the Gentile, received the Spirit with his household, there was tongues the Samaritans, when they received, there were tongues, all indicative of the God's acceptance of them into the body of Christ. Why tongues here? Well, it was probably a large community around the empire that stayed and held on to John's baptism and John's teaching. Turn from sin and try and obey God. But that was never going to be enough. 
And so it was important, I think, for Paul and his followers to witness that actually when people came through to faith in Christ, the Holy Spirit was outpoured in the same way that it happened at Pentecost. There were many other occasions when believers came through to faith and there was not a tongue sign at Pentecost when 3,000 later on came to faith, when the Philippian jailer came to faith, when the Ethiopian eunuch came to faith. There wasn't the tongue sign. So this is not a teaching that it gives uh, argument for the fact that when you come to faith, there's always a second experience uh, that you can be baptized in the Spirit. We are baptized in the Spirit when we come to faith in Christ. Thereafter, we can be filled with the Spirit at different times. It said we leak as a leaky servant. We need to continue to be filled with the Holy Spirit of Jesus throughout our lives. And there are men and women who are said to be filled with the Spirit of God. So that's the theological teaching of today. You need the Spirit to come through to faith in Christ. And there are some people who only acknowledge God and His teachings and Jesus' teachings without ever coming through to real faith. And so they have never received the Spirit. So this is a warning to all of us. If you haven't received His Spirit into your heart, if you don't know His Spirit, if you haven't got the seal of sonship or daughtership when the Spirit comes in and affirms that you're His child and gives you that assurance, then you need to ask His Spirit into your life. And that will be you coming to real faith. It's not a second experience. It's a first experience. And we all need to receive His Spirit into our hearts. So many people run around thinking they're believers but actually only come through to real faith in Christ when they believe in Jesus and ask His Spirit to come in. That's their first coming to Christ, belief in Christ. Thereafter, their name is written in the book of life. And I think there are perhaps many people who've never really come to real faith and haven't and don't know anything about the Holy Spirit of God. But I want to affirm again the biblical principle that the Spirit of God needs to come into your life when you believe in Jesus. It happens on salvation. Paul says we've all been baptized into the body of Christ. We're baptized when we believe in Jesus. I pray that enlightens and encourages you. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you for the teaching today, for this story, and thank you for your word. And we know, Lord Jesus, we cannot live a moment without your Holy Spirit. Our heart can't change without your Holy Spirit. We can turn from sin and try our best, but without your Spirit uh, granting us the forgiveness that is ours in Christ and giving us power to overcome sin, then in a sense we're only halfway there and we need to come through to real faith. For those who perhaps aren't there yet, would today be a day when they invite your Holy Spirit into their hearts so that they too might be baptized into the body of Christ. We ask this in your precious name. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you early next week. Thank you.